Hey guys, tell you what, why don't we sample some American food for a change? There are plenty of exotic foreign foods that can make a Yankee queasy. However, on the flip side, there are plenty of foods in the good old U.S. of A. that foreigners find especially repulsive. Here are 15 foods Americans eat that disgust foreigners. Turducken. Ben, quick! They're bringing out the turducken! Why have a boring old turkey for Thanksgiving when you could have a chicken, a duck, and a turkey all rolled into one incredibly indulgent feast? The turducken is actually a bizarre Frankenstein-like Thanksgiving dish that only an American could dream up. While a few other countries around the globe do celebrate Thanksgiving, only Yanks take the holiday to the extreme. Stuffing a chicken into a duck and then further stuffing it into a turkey is a concept that disgusts plenty of foreigners. That's disgusting! To make matters worse, some Americans like to deep-fry their turducken, as if turducken wasn't strange enough already. Some say the turducken is the brainchild of Cajun chef Paul Prudhomme, while others believe it was invented by New Orleans-based surgeon Dr. Gerald R. Lanasa. Rumor has it that the Big Easy Doc would use his scalpel to debone the birds before stuffing them inside one another. Only in a America. Grits. You never heard of grits? For some Americans, grits are an important part of a balanced breakfast. A bowl of grits is the perfect example of southern comfort food, but most foreigners are really grossed out by this hearty dish made from cornmeal. It doesn't matter if it's savory or sweet, foreigners can't stomach the stuff. You definitely shouldn't say that to a southern grandma. Or are you and me gonna have problems? Some foreigners even say grits taste like wallpaper paste. It certainly looks the part. Even adding bacon and butter isn't enough for some folks. Rocky Mountain Oysters. Colorado specialty, Rocky Mountain Oysters. Forget nachos and wings, there are plenty of ranchers in Colorado who would rather chow down on a plate of deep fried Rocky Mountain Oysters while watching the Broncos or Avalanche play. Rocky Mountain Oysters are actually the dangly bits of a bowl. You know, as Austin Powers would say, I'm eating two veg, my twig and berries. They even serve Rocky Mountain Oysters at Coors Field. Some Rockies fans prefer to eat this bizarre ballpark snack instead of hot dogs. Rocky Mountain Oysters aren't for everyone. Perhaps it's best to stick to a box of Cracker Jack if you have a sensitive stomach. If you see an angry steer in a field during your next cross-country road trip, you'll know why. Oh, for all you city slickers out there, a steer is a bowl that's missing its unmentionables. Root beer. There's neither root beer nor cola. It doesn't matter if it's Barks, Mug, or a and root beer is simply too strange for some foreigners. Perhaps it's the strong flavor or the tangy aftertaste. Some foreigners even say root beer has a medicinal taste and have compared it to cough syrup. If only root beer got rid of a cold like a spoonful of Buckley's. Just to add a little cough syrup. Even a huge dollop of vanilla ice cream isn't enough to change their minds. Root beer is incredibly unpopular in Europe. It's so despised that most supermarkets don't even carry it. If foreigners think root beer is bad, they'll probably want to avoid sarsaparilla. Come to think of it, the only person that likes sarsaparilla is Abe Simpson. Chicken and waffles. Before that, you can only get chicken or waffles. It might sound like blasphemy, but some foreigners find chicken and waffles disgusting. Granted, it is a strange combination, but the taste more than makes up for the bizarre pairing. This sweet and savory soul food staple is beloved by plenty of Americans, including hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg? Paul Snoop Dogg. He can often be seen stuffing his face with crispy fried chicken and syrup-covered waffles at Roscoe's. The restaurant is an L.A. institution that has been dishing out poultry and breakfast food since 1975, when bell bottoms were in and Jaws was swimming on the big screen. Pimento cheese sandwich. Pimento cheese. How's that sound? Pimento cheese is a southern favorite that's traditionally made of sharp cheddar cheese, pimentos, and mayonnaise. The creamy concoction, which is often called caviar of the south or Carolina caviar, can be spread on crackers or used as a dip for veggies. Pimento cheese is also commonly slathered between two pieces of white bread. The result is a strange sandwich that would make most foreigners run for the hills. 
Sandwich is making me flush. Golf fans also enjoy pimento cheese sandwiches. It's the number one snack at Augusta. Thousands of pimento cheese sandwiches have been eaten during Masters tournaments over the years. Just be careful when you take a bite. Tiger Woods would be plenty upset if you accidentally spilled pimento cheese on his green jacket. Snow cones. Snow cones? <laughs> Let's be honest, snow cones are nothing more than ice and sugar. Foreigners simply can't stand the amount of sugar that Americans eat, so it's no surprise that many people overseas find snow cones disgusting. I've got diabetes. Glenn's got diabetes. Some foreigners say the combination of syrup and shaved ice shouldn't even count as food. Barack Obama might disagree. He absolutely loves snow cones. In addition to the risk of cavities, snow cones can also lead to a chipped or cracked tooth. Yikes. Cheese Whiz. But that could upset the Cheese Whiz people. Americans are obsessed with Cheese Whiz, but foreigners tend to be absolutely disgusted by the stuff. A jar of Cheese Whiz is so processed that it barely contains any real cheese at all. Foreigners, especially those in cheese-loving countries like France, consider the gooey cheese sauce to be an affront to nature. It was a pattern of disrespect and inappropriate behavior. Americans have been pouring Cheese Whiz on nachos and spreading it on toast since the 1950s when Elvis Presley was tearing up the airwaves and I Love Lucy was the most popular show on TV. Despite its longevity, Cheese Whiz remains extremely unpopular overseas. It's sold in Canada, Mexico, Venezuela, and the Philippines, but sales are nowhere near as robust as they are in the United States. Deep Fried Butter It looks like they're deep frying vegetables, mashed potatoes, butter. Foodies around the globe love all sorts of fried snacks, but deep fried butter is an artery clogging treat that only an American could love. To make this cardiac arrest inducing treat, frozen golf ball sized scoops of butter are covered in batter and plopped into the deep fryer. Needless to say, the calorie count is off the charts. Look at this food. It's gross and unhealthy. It'll take a lot of cardio to work off a serving of deep fried butter. If you muster up the courage to try this midway snack, make sure there's an ambulance nearby. You'll probably be mighty thirsty after eating deep fried butter. Just make sure you order your Coke in liquid form when you're done at the Texas State Fair. Yes, they even deep fry Coke. Both deep fried Coke and deep fried butter were created by extreme Dream fryer Abel Gonzalez Jr. Deep frying is a lifestyle and one that we can definitely get behind. Scrapple. Buy me some scrapple, sailor. Scrapple looks as unappealing as it sounds. This Pennsylvania favorite is made from pork scraps and trimmings. Basically, Scrapple is a congealed meatloaf made from all the nasty bits that would typically go to waste. Snout, heart, and liver are all common ingredients, and Scrapple wouldn't be complete without a little bit of pork jowl thrown in for good measure. All that awful is mixed together with a hearty helping of cornmeal, flour, and spices. Oh boy, spices! Fans of Scrapple can't get enough of this bizarre delicacy, and they love to smother it in honey and maple syrup. Would the honey and maple syrup be necessary if it actually tasted good? Wolf's Superior Sandwiches in Philly even created a cheesesteak using Scrapple that's fittingly called the Gritty. It certainly sounds like something that the wild and crazy Flyers mascot would enjoy chowing down on. Casseroles. The casseroles were endless and y'all's sympathy got me through. When Americans are in a pinch, they make a casserole for dinner. Anything and everything can be plopped into a casserole dish and put in the oven to make a filling meal. Whatever's in the cupboard will do. Mushroom soup, tuna, ground beef, and canned corn are all acceptable ingredients. Just don't put them all into one casserole. Because you would be worried that it would taste awful. The thing that disgusts most foreigners about casseroles is the salt. Many casseroles are packed full of enough sodium to cover the salt flats of crate from The Last Jedi. Garbage plate. Why don't you just call it a garbage plate? A garbage plate contains just about everything but the kitchen sink. Home fries, beans, macaroni salad, chili, hot dogs, and hamburger patties are piled high onto a single plate. 
Fans of this gruesome and greasy dish often top the mountain-high pile of food with ketchup and hot sauce and then mix it all together into an unrecognizable mess. You could say it's the epitome of American cuisine because it's cheap, filling, and extremely unhealthy. Objection! Unhealthy! Few foreigners are able to stomach this heaping mess, and the ones that can usually end up with plenty of leftovers. The garbage plate is the signature dish at Nick Tahoe Hots in Rochester, New York, and customers have been stuffing their faces with this detestable dish since 1918, when Harry Houdini was escaping straitjackets and wowing audiences with his vanishing elephant trick. Come to think of it, making a garbage plate disappear is almost as impressive as making an elephant disappear. Pickled pig's feet. I want to eat some of them chitlin. I love pig feet. You can find pickled pig's feet on dinner tables in China, Italy, and Mexico, but this grotesque snack is most associated with good old-fashioned southern-style soul food. There are plenty of gross pickled foods that are regularly eaten in the U.S., but pickled pig's feet might be the most disgusting. Ew. Ew. Pickled eggs seem pretty tame in comparison. To make this bizarre bar food, Porky's Trotters are salted and smoked before they're submerged in a jar of hot vinegar brine. The result is a downright nasty dish that can last in your pantry for up to two years. You'll be saying, that's all, folks, to your appetite when pickled pig's feet are on the menu. Sugary Cereals Chris, I think you've had too much sugar cereal. Eating a big bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch while watching Saturday morning cartoons is a rite of passage for many Americans. But most foreigners prefer breakfast cereals that are far healthier. You definitely won't find Apple Jacks and Sugar Crisp at grocery stores in Japan. American cereals are packed with enough sugar to make Willy Wonka richer than Elon Musk. Sugar-filled cereals are so popular in the States that many Americans would recognize Toucan Sam before their local congressperson. Americans think Lucky Charms are magically delicious, but there are plenty of Australians who would be disgusted by the sight of a bowl of rainbows, hearts, and four-leaf clovers. To Aussies, Vegemite is far tastier than a bowl of Frosted Flakes. What did you say? American cereals weren't always packed with so much sugar. In the roaring 1920s, American children ate cornflakes and Rice Krispies. Today, those cereals are considered too bland and boring for most kids. Americans are taking sugary cereals to absurd levels these days. There are even cereals made from Oreo cookies and Dunkaroos. Why not just pour milk into a big bowl of sugar? Corn dogs. What are corn dogs? <laughs> Cheap sausages dipped in butter and deep fried. Corn dogs are an American classic, but most foreigners find this iconic fair food repulsive. Corn dogs are so popular that more than 630,000 of them are sold at the Texas State Fair every year. Hot dogs are pretty revolting to begin with. They're usually made with beef or pork trimmings, but it's often hard to tell exactly what type of meat is used to make hot dogs. That's why many people say they're made from mystery meat. Just don't ask where the meat comes from. <clears throat> To make a corn dog, all you have to do is skewer a hot dog with a stick, dip it in batter, and deep fry it. Recipes don't get much simpler than that. The exact origins of this American favorite are unknown, but many food historians believe corn dogs were invented by German immigrants in the 1920s. The stick was added sometime in the 1940s when kids were playing with slinkies and John Wayne was one of Hollywood's biggest stars. Check out more great videos. Just tap or click. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.